What's up, guys? Welcome to Goals First. I'm your host, Plutus, and this is the best podcast out there for putting your goals first. Why? Because you're joining me on a journey. You know, all the other podcasts out there, they're great, and they really are helpful. These are people that already did it five years ago, ten years ago. No, no, I'm on a journey right now. I have a startup right now. I'm a CEO of an app right now, and you guys are on a journey with me. And whether your goal is to be a millionaire, to be an excellent singer, or to be cleaner, to lose weight, this is the podcast where you learn the self-development skills to actually put your goals first. Anyway, guys, if I say something you like, all I ask is that you like, and more importantly, you share with a friend. Subscribing, liking, it all helps. But nothing helps more than me building when you share with one friend per episode. If you gain something, I don't want money, I don't run ads, just share with one friend. But anyway, today's topic is connecting with people. And you cannot connect with people, then you're going to have a lot of trouble. Because connecting with people is one of the most valuable skills out there. When you connect with people, they like you more. They invite you to things. It opens up opportunity in business and networking. You know, if you want to be a millionaire, guess what? You can be amazing at a skill, but you have to connect with people. So connecting with people is literally the most important skill out there. And according to the book by Dale Carnegie, the most famous book out there, for um, you know, business guys and the, the self-help world with how to win friends and influence people. And according to how to win friends and influence people by like Dale Carnegie, 85% of one's success comes from emotional intelligence, which is communication skills, and 15% comes from technical skills. So you know, you get your straight A students out there who do amazing in school, and you know, their the technical skills are through the roof. These technical skills, they're the best engineer, but they're awkward and dorky, and they can't talk to people. Guess what? 15% of your again it's financial success. 15% of your financial success in your industry is from your actual technical knowledge. 85% comes from your ability to talk with people and connect. So connecting with people couldn't be more important. And that's why I'm going to break down today connecting with people, some skills, some tips, you know, stuff like that. So here's the first thing. If you open up and you open up to somebody, you know, you genuinely open up to that person by yourself, um, they will also do it. And this is what you have to do. When you're meeting a new person, and it feels like, you know, who, who has had the awkward silence where it's like, hey, hey, how are you? Good, good. No, 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 no. You open up and they will follow, but you do it in the correct way. So if you open up and you start, this is how you do it with a new person. You start 90-10. You're doing 90% of the talking, 90% of the conversation flow, and they do 10%. This is to get someone going. Now, this doesn't mean you just go and say, but, 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 no, 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 no. You have about your day. So maybe you're outside and you meet a girl on a college campus, okay? And you go, hey, come here for a second. I, you know, I'll talk to you, right? Pretty. And you open up first and be like, oh, I had the craziest day ever. I, you know, my roommate just got in a fist fight. What, what was going on with the day? Or I, you know, it, it don't make things up. Like, there's this thing where it's like, you know, to pick up a girl in a, in a bar. A lot of the pickup artists or scam artists will tell you, you make up a crazy story. There's two midgets fighting outside. Do you want to see it? No, no, don't do that. That's stupid. You say, talk about something that's real. You know, I can say, well, you know, I had a crazy day. I just had this crazy podcast where I was talking about these topics. And here's the thing. Here's why you talk about something real to connect with people. If you talk about something real and it's genuine, your energy projects that it's genuine and you're interested. And you will be actually interested in what you're talking about. So because you're projecting the energy, which is authentic and real, that you're interested in the topic you're speaking about, a lot of the times the person will hop on that vibe and want to open up. So you open up first by telling interesting stories about yourself. What happened that day and you know it's me something little I was walking my dog and he peed on my shoe you know whatever so you look up first and you will connect with the person and you start maybe 90 10 and then you ask them a question how about your day what do you do do you have any interest in uh, podcasts what podcast do you listen to and by you talking first and then giving little questions it goes from 90 10 of you talking to 70 percent of you talking 30 percent of them talking and as it goes forward you'll find the conversation kind of drifts to 50 50 or at least they're comfortable because you open up first you created the barrier you broke the barrier to open up and it's amazing that's how you do things so yeah, just consider that. And I'll give you an example. So a lot of times, I do something called Instacart, where I go uh, shopping for people. It's from Instacart, and you shop at supermarkets, grocery stores. And when you shop there, you know, you, you, you have opportunities to meet girls. And what I do, I, there's a lot of pretty cashiers where I shop. I work in a, uh, it's an upscale area, and it's just so many beautiful women at these, at these stores. And I will flirt with the cashiers by opening up my day first. I'll be like, oh, these Instacart orders, or if it's a big order, I'll be like, oh, it's such a big order, it's such a pain in the butt. But, you know, I, I make good money. I talk about the Instacart. I talk about my day. Ugh. You know, th today, at the first place I was at the store before yours, uh, the cashier was so grumpy. I'm so glad I had you. I opened up first, and I guess the cashier, these pretty girls, you know, smiling and talking to me. And then they open up. Oh, you know, my day's been kind of shitty. I'll have a cashier with, you know, a real resting bitch face. 
I uh, they go, you look upset today, are you okay? You, you look angry. And you know, they go, oh, my name's crazy too. And when you open up first, and this goes for dating, picking up women, but more importantly for friends. When you wanna make a new friend, you have to ask me to contribute. You have to ask me to contribute. And you contribute to the group by opening up. You say, you know, I talk about your stuff, but, but this only goes so far in the sense that when you open up to a kind of person, you also have to come with silence. What you don't want to do is be autistically ranting about your day in a way that's boring. Now, you might think, uh, Plutus, how do I tell the difference? You know, you're telling me on one hand to go open up person, rant about my day, and talk about interesting stories, but you're also saying be comfortable in silence, which do I do? So you have to gauge the person's body language. And, you know, body language sounds like a hard thing to gauge until you learn it's really simple. You know, it's not, you don't have to go read a whole book on it. There's two simple things you do to gauge body language. If the person's interested in what you're saying and the conversation is going good, even if they're not talking back much, they're just like, yeah. Number one, they'll be smiling. Like, yeah, like, you know, they'll seem interested. You can tell because they're smiling. If they're, yup, they're not interested. If they're giving you one word answers and they're not smiling, they're probably not interested. Now, also the way you can tell is people don't realize this, but when they're at someone's having a conversation they don't want to have, they'll turn away. So their physical body will not be facing you. The more the person wants to be talking to you, the more they will be directly facing you, as in like parallel, their, their chest parallel to your chest. So even if they're not, you know, they're not reciprocating, if they are facing you directly, straight facing you, they are interested. If they are responding, they are interested. Now, eye contact. This is a tricky one. A lot of people are, are shy, but if they're really avoiding eye contact, they don't want to be talking to you, and that's when you walk away. And not everybody can connect with you. You're not with everybody, but if you look at these, you know, these key things, you learn to open up, you'll start connecting with people much easier. So you use eye contact and body language to gauge how interested they are. And like I said, this is you know, very simple stuff. You look at them, if they are hardly avoiding eye contact and giving you one-word answers, just stop. You're just annoying them. But if you're practicing the skill I'm talking about where you just you open up your day, you talk about things that really happened, and you put passion behind it. I was practicing guitar today, and it was so hard, but I, seemed to, I got so close to learning the song Good Riddance or something. You know, you can tell if they're interested. So I'll give you another example of, uh, you know, going further. you got to be comfortable with the silence. So you got to know you know, when to talk, when to be quiet. So this is good for opening the whole, you know, ranting about your day and putting the connection. But to connect with people, you also be comfortable with silence because it shows you're comfortable with yourself. So for that initial first time you meet the person, yeah, you want to get them talking and you be talking. But to build a friendship, to connect with someone on a deeper level, when you're with them, you know, don't talk just the talk. Once you're, so now that the initial phase is you're talking just the talk, you're showing me your day, you're bringing your energy to the table, and you're contributing, you're putting out your energy. Um, but, you know, let's say you, you had the hangout session. So now whether it's a friend or a girl you're interested in, you made it from the initiating a meeting to hanging out. Now you got to be comfortable with silence. I don't mean you sit there the entire time and just say nothing. I mean, you got to be comfortable with silence in between things. So, you know, there's a moment of silence, just let it be. Just let it be. And here's the reason. If you're trying to force the conversation, it's not going to work, you know. It, it just gets annoying. People get annoyed when you're forcing a conversation. Don't force it, but you gauge with the eye contact and body language. And if it's, you know, if they're getting a little annoyed, just, just be quiet for a minute. But yeah. And then, you know, if you're on a date, you're eating, go back to eating. If you're playing golf on your first date, be quiet for a few minutes and let the ball be in their court so they have to talk. I'll give you another example of, uh, you know, connecting with people through your language. So there was this girl I brought with me to a party once, and, you know, I wasn't happy with her behavior because she flirted with other guys, and it wasn't my girlfriend, so it was my place to speak. It wasn't my place to tell you, you can't do that, but I don't like the way she was behaving. So I was silent. I would just, you know, it'd be something like, oh, that guy's so hot over there. I'd fuck him hard, and I would just literally just not respond to her. And what this did was it communicated that I don't like what you're doing. My silence communicated I wasn't happy with what was going on. But also, you know, if you correct somebody, they're going to do the opposite. You know, if you're told to do something, your instinct is to do the opposite. It's like, who the hell are you telling me what to do? So silence can be key. And this, this girl at these parties, man, so what, what ended up happening was I was basically silent when she was doing the behaviors I didn't like. And you know, it wasn't like to punish or anything. I just I didn't like the behavior, so I wasn't going to engage with Don't engage with things you don't like, and silence is okay. So when she was you know, doing things I didn't like, I would just not respond. And you know, eventually, this, this girl came back to me, and you know, we had a great night. Because I was not rewarding behaviors I didn't like, and I was being friendly and talkative and engaging about the things I did like. And it works the same in reverse. When you talk about things the person doesn't like, they get silent because silence is a way to uh, subliminally punish the behavior you don't like. You gotta realize this stuff. 
Another example, I'll give you another story, is um, I have a friend who's an amazing stock trader. He's a day trader. And, you know, it's a really hard work. You got to look, look at the stocks all day and be critical and be on top of it. And he's someone I wanted to just chill and do work with. So I was doing my work on my laptop and he was doing his. And if I was talking the whole time, he wouldn't want to be engaged with me. He'd be like, oh, I don't want to chill with this guy while I work because he talks the whole time. So I did my work on my laptop. My buddy, he did his work on his laptop. And, you know, occasionally I throw in a joke. I'd be like, ah, how's it going? But silence, you got to know when to be silent. And that's the, the, there's settings to do this and you got to kind of gauge it. And again, you gauge it. It goes back to seeing the talking, you gauge it through body language. So uh, I want to also only talk now. <clears throat> actually, this goes for all, all of the categories. Only talk if you have something to contribute. So for meeting somebody, what you're contributing is your day, your energy, your vibe. You had an amazing day. Something crazy happened. Your dog peed on you. You, you learned a new guitar song that you're passionate about. You started a new business. You're learning how to do opera singing. I don't know. Maybe you're a skateboarder. So you have to have something to contribute. When you're talking to receive something, like you're talking like, so what do you do? How old are you? Where do you study? These basic things. The reason why small talk doesn't work is because you're seeking something. You're seeking their attention. If you're seeking, you're not going to have a good conversation because you're seeking versus you're genuinely just telling them about something interesting in your day because you really found it interesting. That's putting out. So you're contributing. Or maybe, you know, if I know they're interested in a topic you know about, so you talk about that topic because you're contributing to the, to the, if the group setting or one-on-one. And regardless, when you contribute, people are very engaged with you. When you don't contribute, people are annoyed. So you make sure that what you're saying is contributing to the conversation rather than seeking, you're taking away something. If you want an answer, if you want something from them, if it's just words, you want them to engage with you, you want friendship, it's going to push them away. Contribute. And you'll find when you can only are contributing, and you're silently you something to contribute, the response is amazing. People love to be around you because they know that when you're talking, you're contributing and you're not somebody who's seeking something from them. No one likes to be seeking. You, know, you, you ever be in a mall and the people grab your hands, they go, let me show you this lotion. Let me just ask you one question. Uh, what do, how's your skin? Let me do this. Oh, come on, give a special today. It's annoying as all hell. You don't like it. Stop. When someone's seeking something, your instant natural reaction is repellent. Like, please get the hell away from me. You're seeking something from me. You can tell when someone's seeking something from you. You can tell. Your instinct, your gut says, oh, this person's seeking something. I don't want it. So don't be seeking in conversation. Only contribute. Now, <clears throat> there's a great quote. I heard it by uh, Jason Capital. I don't think he made the quote, but it's an amazing quote. It's, the more you tell them, the more you repel them. I'll say it again. The more you tell them, the more you repel them. Why is this? Because you, you have nothing left to, left to offer when you tell someone too much. So I'm going to give you a great story, a great example. I have this podcast, obviously, because I'm doing it right now. And, you know, just for the sake of, you know, I, I like girls like any other guy, I put it in my Tinder bio that, you know, hosts the Goals First podcast. I'll, I'll mention it to people. But, the more you tell them, the more you repel them. So imagine if I'm like, yeah, this podcast, and I talk about goals first and goal achievement, blah, 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 blah. They'll be like, okay, what else? Oh, that's it. I told you it all. Why is there going to be a reason for more conversation if you tell them it all? No one likes that. The more you tell them, the more you repel them. Now imagine, and this is what I do with goals first, and I talk about my podcast. I go, yeah, this podcast. I talk about like goal achievement and things like that. But anyway, what, what do you do? So now... It is two things. They're talking about themselves, and everyone loves talking about themselves. So if you can find questions to ask about something they're genuine, I don't mean how's your day, what major are you, that's stupid. If you can talk about something that they really are interested in, that's great because they love talking about themselves. And by saying, oh, I do this thing, eh, it's nothing, moving on, that leaves them wondering more. They're wondering what's, what, you, what you do, they want more, and you just tiptoed around it. You just slide slapped. You know, you went, woo! And, and you didn't get that information, so now they want to finish the conversation or chill with you again or ask more questions because you're like, I, I do this cool thing. And maybe you're a photographer. I, I do photography. I got a little side business. But anyway, what do you do? H how do you like, uh, you know, maybe talking to a girl who's into like an art history major? Well, who's your favorite artist? You know, so the, the point of this is the more you tell, the more you repel. You want to give a little, you want to set up your sentences and your information about yourself, about your life, so there's more to ask. If you gave out all the information and there's no more to ask, you fucked up. That's just the truth. You fucked up. Make sure when someone's asking questions about you, you say it in a way that it's open-ended and there's more to ask about it because then, you know, there's more to do. Why would someone want to go on a second date with you if on the first date you told them your whole life story? You know, I know this is a lot of guys and girls where you just pour out, you want to, talk, you want to find conversation pieces, so you just pour out all this stuff about you. 
uh, this is me. I'm a, ma- I'm a business major and I have a podcast and blah, 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 blah. My mom did this. My dad did this when I was a kid, yada, yada, yada. You know, and it's like, okay, well, on the second date, what are you going to talk about? They know everything about you. Like, why would they care? Um, you know, who doesn't love a mysterious person? We all love a mystery. Why do you think mystery books sell so well? They sell so well because people love mysteries. It's innate in our nature to love mysteries. So you create the mystery in yourself. You know, maybe you think, guys, something cool going on. Guess what? Just be mysterious. You know, what do you do for work? Eh, I'm just working on something right now. It's no big deal. Of course, the person's going to be like, what are you working on? It's this little side project. But uh, anyway, what, what do you do? That's what gets people's interest. And this applies, I keep talking about girls, this applies for friends too. You want to make a friend? You talk, you give a little, think about, have you ever been to a Costco or BJ's or uh, any supermarket? Have you ever had a free sample in a food court? Why do they give free samples? Why do people give free samples? So you want more of the product. So think about your life and your social interactions as free samples. You want to get people wanting more, not less of you, right? You know, no, you, the goal is to get more. You want people wanting more of you. If you're watching me and you're still listening, you probably understand you want people to want more of you. So you do this by giving out free samples. A free sample is a little short snippet of what the topic is. So what's your major? I, I work in the business field. What's your job? I, I work in the art field. What do you do? Well, it's not important. But uh, you know, then any follow up with a question, you change the, the conversation. Free samples will get you a long way and just realize you know, when you who hasn't been walking in the food court and some nice Asian lady hands you a free sample of that delicious chicken on that nice little wooden toothpick and you, mm, that caramelized sweet taste around that chicken, that breading that you know is so greasy and bad for you, but it tastes so good. And that free sample makes you go buy the $8.99 full meal where and it's like, shit, this thing's fatty and disgusting, but you did it because the free sample made you want more. Just how our brain works. Um, let's see what else. Sorry, guys. I'm looking at my notebook behind there because that's where I wrote my notes at. And, yeah, it's a little casual today. I, I normally have a full tie and better, better outfits, but today's a casual Monday motivation. Um, and I, here's another thing. And I, listen, I still talk fast. Anyone that listens to me knows I talk super fast. But here's what you want to do. Oh, I, well, talking fast is okay when it's like this kind of thing, when it's a reason to talk fast to get a lot of information out. Or if that's just how you talk, as long as you pronunciate your words, you know, talk fast, whatever. But here's a story I'm going to give you about why, why you shouldn't give too much information. When I was younger and I didn't understand this, these concepts and people didn't like me, I was doing the worst thing possible. I was talking fast to get my stories out. Everything I said not to do, I was doing. I was basically, like, let's say I, uh, you know, I had a story with a teacher giving me a bad grade because... I said something they didn't like. So I would say, oh, that reminds me of this one time that this teacher and me got an art, you know, I would basically rapid fire give people my entire story. And I was giving them the rapid fire story because I was scared that if I said it too slow, they would cut me off and lose interest in my story. And that's the absolute worst thing. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the absolute worst thing you can do. And I was so desperate to get people to hear my story and what I had to say that I would just say it so fast, not because I talk fast. I would say it so fast so they couldn't get a word in because I was scared if they got a word in, then that was it. I couldn't get my story out and they would move on to the next thing, and especially in a group setting with a bunch of people chilling. I'd be worried if I didn't snippet my whole story in, then I would lose the ability to be the person talking in the group. And, you know, it's quite the opposite. If you're in a group setting, you want to keep the mystery you know, that you're talking about. The mystery, the mystery. It works so amazing. Um, you know, and, and that's, I guess, really it. Uh, let's see where else I have my notes for you guys about this topic of connecting with people. Oh. So when you connect with a new person, I want you to realize this. You go on TikTok, right? When you're on TikTok and you're scanning on TikTok, how many seconds do you get a video before you swipe up if you didn't like it? Two seconds? Three seconds? In the uh, community of self-help and videos and all this shit, it's debated, or marketing community, it's debated whether it's two or four seconds to gain someone's interest in a commercial, but whether it's commercial or TikTok, realistically, that video is about two or three seconds to catch your interest before you go to the next video. Well, it's the same conversation. And I don't care what people say, it's bullshit. When you meet a girl, she judges you in three seconds. Is this guy high value or is he not? Is this guy something I'm interested in or is he not? And yes, you can gain interest over the years or over time by, by showing who you are. But for someone you don't know, in a conversation you meet them, you know, whether it's a, a person you become friends with or a girl you want to take out on a date, you get three seconds to impress them. The first three seconds are critical to establish who you are. And that's why the first three seconds, two or three seconds, you guys just be cool and dominant. Hey, come here. I'm Jared, nice to meet you. You know, for a girl, hey man, where did you get that tie? Looks so professional. 
what do you do for a living? Uh, the way you're dressed, I'm just so interested. So you got to say something in the first three seconds that get their interest, and that's why the generic, hey, how's your day, what's your major, what's up, doesn't work. Everyone says, what's up? Everyone's saying, hey, what's up? Everyone thinks of that. It thinks being more creative because the first three seconds are the time period you have to gain someone's interest. Um, you know, I, I think that's about it for today, guys, but I hope this gave you something you liked. Um, please, 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 if you enjoyed this, share with one friend my podcast, get them watching, get them putting their goals first, just as you are joining me on my crusade, on my journey, putting my goals first as I, you know, I'm starting an app right now, I have a business, and I'm doing a lot, and I hope that you guys can also, it doesn't have to be business, it doesn't have to be being rich, if your goal is to lose weight, learn piano, become a great singer, a great skateboarder, that's equally good, but learn to put your goal first. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, like, share, subscribe. Till next time.